What's up Paladin Pals? Today we'll talk about how to level a Paladin effectively and the skill build I used to get to level 50. If you caught the run on stream, you'll know it took just under 11 and a half hours skipping cutscenes and without using any of my extra skill points from my account. On a fresh run in North America or EU, I'd say this would take around 12 hours, give or take, depending on what version of quests we launch with. If you're a completely new player, it might take you a little longer, but the skill build is solid and I didn't find myself struggling while pushing the story. Let's get right into it. Paladins have two kinds of skills, and for simplicity's sake, we'll just call them blue skills and yellow skills. Your blue skills are sword attacks, while your yellow skills are holy attacks like spells. We'll mostly be using blue skills while leveling since they provide more DPS and utility. For the full skill tree, you can check the description below. By the way, I'm also going to be using the Russian translated names for now until I can confirm what they're actually called in any. Our first skill is Shattering Steel. You start with this ability and unlike most Paladin skills, it has a short cooldown of 6 seconds. It's great as a spammable filler skill. We use it to finish off low health mobs, kill trash mobs, and break objects. I'd go with the third tripod, Cracked Blade, to increase its damage to normal mobs by 50%. This skill is great at level 7 and level 10 too, but unfortunately, or fortunately, all of the Paladin skills are good, so we don't have too many points to go around. Dagger Lunge is another skill we'll have right off the bat. You'll use this from 1 to 50 and never stop using it. We'll want to take the Outstanding Mobility Tripod as soon as possible, and we use this together with our spacebar to move around the map and dungeons quicker. Stick around for the skill usage section to find out more. Double Turn is the third skill we have access to right away. It's on another short cooldown of 6 seconds. It has a decent AoE cleave in front of you, and it's definitely worth putting points in early. Between Double Turn and Shattering Steel, we have two short cooldown skills that we can clear packs with. I took Critical Threat and Liberation of Power to boost the damage. We unlock Righteous Anger at level 12. It's a slow sword combo that has 6 hits. It's not the best ability, but we'll use it until we get something better. This is a back attack, so you'll get a little more damage by using it behind the boss. I picked up Critical Threat and left the skill at level 4. We'll replace it as soon as possible. The reason I don't really love this skill is because it takes too long to get the full combo off. Most of the time, you'll have to dodge or you'll get hit while using this skill, knocking you down. Internal Bleeding unlocks at level 16. This is a skill we'll use from now until the end, then in Chaos Dungeons 2. When you have your special aura active, this skill has insane AoE. It's a head attack that does great damage, and we'll be using it especially to take down tanky enemies. I picked up Dexterous Hands for the attack speed, Last Argument to boost the damage, and later on, Steel Cross. This skill is a head attack, so we want to make the animation as short as possible. I'll show you guys how to use this skill effectively in the usage section coming up. At level 20 we get Foresight, which is another great leveling skill. When you hold the skill down, your character dashes in the direction of your mouse, then does a slash at the end. We pick up Frisky Legs, which boosts our movement speed while dashing. Combined with Dagger Lunge and our Spacebar Dodge, we have three movement skills that help us zoom through the story. Harsh Retribution unlocks at level 24, and this skill absolutely slaps. Depending on the build, it can do either crazy damage to clear trash mobs, or work as a single target boss DPS skill. Special Bullet, the level 7 tripod, makes this skill do 60% more damage to rare tier and higher monsters. At level 10, pick Smooth Cut for clearing mobs and Triple Attack for bosses. We get Wide Attack at level 32. It's a circular slash that has good AoE, but we'll only use it for a few levels since we get something better. You can pick up either Protective Barrier or Destructive Fists with the first tripod. Barrier gives you a shield when you use it, and Fists pulls in enemies. Neither of them really matter and we'll replace this skill anyway, so just pick what you like. The level 7 tripod we pick up is Conqueror, which lets you do more damage if you release this skill at the right time after holding the button. Our last blue skill is Sword of Justice. This will be a staple in our moveset for leveling, chaos dungeons, and even raids. Learn to use it and love it. It has crazy single target damage. I picked up Magic Trail for extra DPS, Find Weakness for 40% more damage to elites and bosses, and Concentrated Energy for 120% more damage. Our first yellow or holy skill is Hand of Heaven which we get at level 18. It's an AoE burst around your character that deals solid damage and charges our identity gauge. 
Pick up high voltage for increased AoE and inexhaustible faith for 100% faster charging of our aura. Later on, we can take Guardian of Light for extra damage in Chaos Dungeons. At level 36, we get Wave of Light, which replaces Wide Attack. This skill is super satisfying to use. You target an area on the ground, and after a cast time, you do massive damage. Wave of Light obliterates anything in its range, and you want to use it carefully since it has a long cooldown. Pick up Total Concentration to reduce the cast time, Affected Area for 20% more AoE, and later on, Explosion Consequences, which leaves a lingering dot on the ground. I'll briefly talk about the scale build while leveling, but for a detailed tree and level by level skilling guide, just check the description below. Unlike Bard, which has several abilities that stand out, all of Paladin's skills are really good. They're also on longer cooldowns, which kind of discourages going all in on any one skill. For example, we could boost Hand of Heaven to level 10, but it's on a 27 second cooldown. It'll clear one pack and leave us with subpar skills until it comes off CD again. I'd recommend an even split of level 7 skills, only picking up level 10 after we have our core skill set done. Trust me, we'll have more than enough damage even with level 7 abilities. As with our bar tree, we'll want to have a boss killing preset with level 10 in our hard hitting single target abilities like Harsh Retribution, Internal Bleeding, and Sword of Justice. Let's talk a little bit about skill usage. We don't have a preset combo per se, since our skills have long cooldowns. In general, we want to make sure the largest concentration of mobs are in front of us. Our sword skills usually hit in a cone or area directly in front of the character, so try and group up mobs in front of you. Wave of Light and Hand of Heaven are both circular AoEs that should take care of packs by themselves, but you can use Shattering Steel to clean up any survivors. When these are off cooldown, group up as many mobs as you can and drop the nuke on them. Double turn will do a lot of heavy lifting until we get to higher levels. So a typical combo is double turn into shattering steel to take care of regular mobs. Other than that, just use your skills as they come off cooldown. Using our skills fills up the identity gauge with holy energy. We want to activate the blue aura or Z, which boosts damage of our sword skills and makes them stronger. The yellow aura is for supporting your party, so you don't really need to use it. If you're playing with a friend, you can consider it, but you'll probably get more damage out of the blue aura. For bosses, it's important to know that all of our heavy hitters are hit attacks. Harsh Retribution, Sword of Justice, and Internal Bleeding do more damage when you hit a boss straight on. They also have 10% extra crit chance. Right in front of the boss is also the most dangerous spot, so you'll have to watch carefully for the right time to do it. Since they're on long cooldowns, getting the head attack off is good, but it's definitely better to get a guaranteed hit. If you get hit or knocked down while trying to get a head attack, the skill will be on cooldown and you'll lose a huge amount of damage. A common boss strategy we'll use is to circle behind the boss, use Shattering Steel, then immediately use one of our head attack skills. What will usually happen is the boss will turn around to attack you midway through the animation, letting you get the head attack off while giving you enough time to dodge out of the way. You'll also want to use Dagger Lunge to reposition yourself after dodging, or if the boss moves away from you. When you're in a dungeon, make sure you save your aura for the boss to get more DPS. This was the build I used to get to 50 in under 12 hours, but if you have a different build or if you have any sweet paladin tips, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll be coming up with a chaos dungeon and a raid guide for paladin as well as bard, so if you want to see that, make sure you stick around and subscribe. Thanks as always, this has been Ayu, and until next time, bye you. Oh, I can't use my awakening because I don't have chaos shards. I didn't buy them. <laughs> we lost. We fucking lost. <laughs>